Welcome back. If it is John, this is watching the news at 10, broadcasting on Channel Television live from Lagos. I'd like to remind you of a developing story. The APC governors are about now meeting at the Imo Governor's Lodge in the federal capital territory, Abuja. This comes on the heels of a reconciliation of National Assembly members to discuss the next line of action in the National Assembly. Again, APC governors are meeting at the Imo State Governor's Lodge for a meeting on reconciling the National Assembly members. They will also be discussing the next line of action for the National Assembly. We'll bring you details as the story unfolds. The Senate has directed the executive to stop all waivers on rice importation and agricultural products for now. The Senate also asked the executive to mandate the CBN governor and the Comptroller General of Customs to ensure that all duty due to government is recovered. Federal lawmakers in the upper chamber reached these resolutions after an extensive debate on what they termed the indiscriminate use and abuse of waivers for rice importation in the country. A number of proactive countervailing actions. Recently, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emifiele, at a meeting with the Senate president, said Nigeria loses 30 billion naira from waivers to rice importing companies. At that meeting, the Senate leadership directed the Central Bank of Nigeria to work with the Nigeria Customs Service to recover the sum of 30 billion naira in waivers to rice importers. The Senate is not letting go of this issue as a federal lawmaker at Thursday's legislative proceedings raised a motion on the indiscriminate use and abuse of waivers for rice importation. The Senate observes that this policy, especially relating to agriculture, has become significantly eroded and, gra and gradually made nonsense off by the indiscriminate abuse of grants, of waivers, concessions and grants, especially on rice importation. That the debate on waivers for rice importation was then thrown open with majority of lawmakers condemning what they say is the flagrant abuse of the waiver policy. From our investigation in the anti-corruption network, we found out that there is a satanic collab between the bureaucracy, especially the customs and the Federal Ministry of Finance, and these importers. They grant waivers and sit down to hold clandestine meetings on sharing formulas. Now you can't owe government 20 something billion, and again, nothing happens. And I think the responsibility is to ensure that we see that we have a country that there are laws and people must respect those laws. But some lawmakers called for caution. Rice is the food that the poor man and every Nigerian, including my humble self, eat. The, anything that leads to a perception that rice imports will stop, what you will get will be hurting of the rice that are in the warehouses for distribution and instantly the price of rice will rise. At the end of the debate, the Senate asked the federal government to stop all waivers on rice importation and agricultural products for now. The upper chamber also set up an ad hoc committee to look into waivers, concessions and grants and recover all outstanding monies owed to the federal government. But as seen in previous assemblies, it's one thing for the Senate to make recommendations and another for the federal government to implement them. Linda Kibi, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the disagreement in the House of Representatives appears to have been resolved as the All Progressives Congress in the House of Representatives has, has accepted to sheath their sword. Uh, during a meeting held today to resolve the issue, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara and Majority Leader Honorable Femi Bajabiamila agreed to work together for the good of all. After the reconciliation meeting, Honorable Dogara said that the House has confined the crisis to history and is now looking towards delivering the dividends of democracy to Nigerians. I'm happy because um, right across all the strata of APC members, we've been able to bring this matter to a responsible end. And uh, for me, it's not just about leadership. When we're running for speakership, we were running to, uh, 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 to provide the kind of leadership.
initiative that will bring the changes that we promise to the people. And if we are stuck by these issues that do not matter to the people, there's no way we can provide that leadership. So the reason why I'm happy is because we have been able, by mutual consent, by talking to ourselves as brothers, to confine this event to the dustbin of history, and we're leaving it to historians to scavenge over these matters. But so on the news that 81 senators passed a vote of confidence on the Senate leadership recently, yet some northern senators of the All Progressives Congress have denied working against the interest of President Muhammadu Buhari. Addressing journalists in the National Assembly, Chairman Senate Ad Hoc Committee on Media and Publicity, Senator Dino Melaye, described any report of that nature as baseless and unfounded. He insists that the members in leadership of the 8th Senate are committed to moving the nation forward. The malicious and fallacious report reveals today that the 81 senators who appended their signatures to the vote of confidence on the leadership of the Senate are enemies of Mr. President, our able, indefatigable, and indomitable President, President Muhammadu Buhari. I want to say without fear or favor, without interference with the job of ethics and privileges, where the said complaint have been um, referred to, that it is wicked. It is satanic. It is unacceptable for anybody to infer, talk less of asserting or alluding to the fact that those who endorsed the leadership of Senator Bukola Saraki in the Senate and other principal officers are against Mr. President. Staying with the goings on in the National Assembly, let's get now to our studios in Abuja, where Gloria Omezoke is with the Honorable Ali Abdullahi, his the representative. Well, thank you, Marachi. And joining North me in the studio right now is Senator representing Niger North, Ali Abdullahi. Thanks for joining us on the news at ten. Thank you. Well, first of all, there seems to be some semblance of calm at the National Assembly. How did you achieve this, both at the Senate and at the House? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I know Channels is one of the TV stations that I so much adore. Okay. Uh, on the subject matter, in truth, we came to the National Assembly to serve Nigerians. And I think the issues that you know, propped up as a result of the leadership tozu are natural occurrence in every human endeavor. And I think if you look at the scenario since this crisis started, we as senators are convinced that we need to put the interest of the nation first. And uh, if you look at our constitution, it is very clear on what we're supposed to do. And uh, arising from that, I want to believe the calm you are seeing is a greater realization that Nigerians expect so much from us and we must be responsive and sensitive to those, you know, expectations. You know, why did it take so long for this crisis to be resolved? I mean, the, the APC leadership had maintained that some of you senators deliberately flouted the APC, uh, uh, I mean, APC, the party's directive as regards choosing a leadership for the National Assembly. Was that the case? Well, to me, as far as I know, uh, there wasn't any deliberate attempt on our own part to flout a particular directive. Mm. To the best of my knowledge, what I knew is that we have a situation where the president, our dear president, Muhammad Buhari, was very clear on the fact that, of course, learning from where we are coming from, interference has always been an issue, and he has made his own policy statement as far as that is concerned. And uh, for us, I believe, taking a cue from that, we are convinced that we should have a Senate that can actually partner with the executive 
to provide the dividend of democracy as you see from the change mantra that our party has you know, campaigned with. And uh, the point is very clear because we know the challenges are enormous. Mr. President is very clear on the fact that youth unemployment is a critical issue that must be addressed. Insecurity is a critical issue that must be addressed. Corruption is a critical issue that he must address, and then the Nigerian economy. And if you tie all of these together, you come to realize that only partnership of all key stakeholders, the three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, must partner together if this clearly spelled out agenda are to be achieved. And personally for me, I'm strongly convinced that yes, Nigerians really want this change. Because even in campaign, I've, I have 87 wards in my senatorial district. And uh, I have gone around to all of these 87 wards. And what one sees is very clear. All right, so uh, let's quickly have your opinion on how we can sustain peace at the assembly. Uh, to my mind, I want to call on my colleagues to remember that uh, the upper chamber is one in which Nigerians expect the best of exemplary character. And I think if you look at even the ward in the House of Palace, for example, they say Majalis and the TJ, that is the, the, the chamber that houses elders. Uh, what is expected of us here is to exercise more patience among ourselves, to be cautious in the way we address issues, and to remember that Nigeria is currently in a very difficult situation with dwindling revenue, with crisis, especially the insecurity. I think we should try to be very sensitive and responsive to this right. so that as senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we can put our acts together and support Mr. President in all he has actually you know, tabled as agenda. All and right. I think we have the capacity, looking at the caliber of people in that chamber, to give that kind of support. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Aliu Abdullahi, for coming on the News at 10. Thank you very much. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. It's back to you, Amarachi. Thanks a lot, Gloria. When the News at 10 returns, an Amber state government to increase a state workers' salaries by 16%. That's in the moment. Please join us again. A million promo. Recharge, call, text, and browse with your Airtel line, and you can.